New videos every day. Here's the names of three of them. Morgan Banks. He turns out to be the senior Army psychologist for the SEER program, which stands for Search, Evasion, Resistance, and Escape. It was a program that was implemented a while back to use on our own soldiers to treat them really harshly to try to inoculate them against being tortured by if they were captured and make them more resistant to uh, giving information and being broken down and that kind of thing. So it was really harsh. <clears throat> What's been revealed recently is that psychologists did the job of so-called reverse engineering this SEER program. So that instead of using it to train and inoculate American soldiers, it was used specifically to break down and get information from our detainees using these very harsh practices that, uh, that Gon uh, Gonzalez and, and uh, Rumsfeld and Cheney and all the way up to the president condoned. Those practices being such as uh, painful stress positions, waterboarding, mock executions, threats with dogs, forced nudity, intense sleep deprivation, all these things which are known to create psychosis and really break people down very badly. So Morgan Banks is on this committee in votes. Bryce Lefevre was involved in it originally as a SEER psychologist in the early 90s and then in, in the interrogation and uh, practices in Afghanistan in 2002. Scott Chumate was on this committee. He's the chief psychology operations for the CIA Center, Counterterrorism Center, the same center ran by Kofor Black, who said, take the gloves off. These are the voting members on this committee. And it was kept secret, but they voted, right? And they didn't allow notes to be taken and that kind of thing. Our, my profession, psychology profession, should be open and disclosing. Secrecy, secrecy. Sounds more like the CIA. Then, just this very month, the American Psychological, Psychological Association visits this issue again. And there was fortunately a lot of dissident psychologists who said, we need to stop. We need to distance ourselves from this, to not participate in this, because what's going on is not only these harsh interrogation and torture practices that we're supporting and condoning, but doing them on people in these sites like Guantanamo and these black sites in other countries where the rights of habeas corpus, the civil rights to an attorney, to legal uh, attention, to all these things have been stripped of the detainees. So we're supporting interrogation and torture on people whose rights have been ripped away and violated by this country. Well, guess what? The APA made a resolution saying we don't like these harsh torture techniques, but they stopped short and put down the call for a moratorium and the request to distance from these practices. And a lot of people like me consider this just an incredible shame and disgrace and an incredible violation of ethics of my profession. When this was being filmed, this at the convention this past month, you know, the, the psychology profession even asked Amy Goodman of Democracy Now!, who was filming a meeting there, and said, you've only got 10 minutes to film, and then you've got to get out of here. She fortunately brought it up for a vote by the people there, and they said, forget that, APA. What is this about secrecy in our profession? Why can't we have public disclosure on this? You know, the reality is that psychologists have so bought into this military mindset and CIA mindset and forgotten what the profession really is about. There's this dual role, helping people or being in the military chain of command, which in this case is a corrupted chain of man command that condones harsh interrogation and torture practices. And so there's a loyalty to that. And the basic human rights and the basic healing profession gets hammered and you have these huge ethical dilemmas. It's a shame and a disgrace. 
I've always challenged my profession around the shame and disgrace of going along with the false beliefs and dangerous practices of biological psychiatry and coercion. There's also this nefarious, not only history, but current reality of psychologists playing a major role in interrogation and torture, and it's wrong. What's really a shame on top of that is that psychology knows a lot about human relationships and human dynamics and laws of human behavior. And one of these is called the dynamics of the power of the situation or the atrocity producing situation. And that human beings are vulnerable to committing atrocities when they're in certain situations and structures that tend to condone, promote, and allow that. That's what happened in Abu Ghraib. That's what's happening with all this. Psychologists are just as vulnerable to this as anybody else. And our profession ought to be rallying around this, calling the United States government and military to account around this, and really educating people about this instead of allowing ourselves to succumb to this and end up committing atrocities and horrors in the name of some convoluted idea of patriotism. I also want to mention two particular psychologists, James Mitchell and Bruce Jessen. They have a business in Spokane, Washington called Mitchell Jessen and Associates. About 120 employees according to the website. Consulting with CIA and military. Major players in terms of uh, this SEER program and the reverse engineering of it. Major force in terms of the role of psychology in all this. Started right after 911 and have become um, very profitable and very involved. And James Mitchell, particularly, is known for his advocacy of these really harsh, severe torture interrogation practices. Mm -hmm.